Eucharistic celebration. Today we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Advent. In response to David's desire to build a temple, God reveals his plan to establish a house, an everlasting kingdom. The Most High will make his dwelling in Mary, the new temple. The child to be born will be holy, the Son of God. All our Mass intentions, in beta, pro infamorum and animus, are scrolling live stream and printed and posted within the main church and chapels. Additionally, they're in the sacristy for the priest to pray for at each Mass and are also placed on the altar during the celebration of the Holy Eucharist. The presider for our Eucharist is Monsignor James Beneventi, assisting Deacon Steve Martinez. Please stand and let us pray the Eucharistic Revival Prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you give us your flesh and blood for the life of the world, and you desire that all people come to the supper of the sacrifice of the Lamb. Renew in your church the truth, beauty, and goodness contained in the most blessed Eucharist. Jesus living in the Eucharist, come and live in us. Jesus healing in the Eucharist, come and heal us. Jesus sacrificing yourself in the Eucharist, come and suffer in us. Jesus rising in the Eucharist, come and rise to new life in us. Jesus loving in the Eucharist, come love in us. Lord Jesus Christ, through the Paschal mystery of your death and resurrection, made present in every holy mass, pour out your healing love on your church and on our world. Grant that as we lift you up during this time of Eucharistic revival, your Holy Spirit may draw all people to join us at this banquet of life. You live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Santa Maria and Camelin, Mother of the Eucharist, pray for us. Amen. Please join us in singing Emmanuel, number 58. Number 58, Emmanuel.
In this Holy Eucharist, we remember the repose of the souls of Father Ken Umoruluk and Francis Kirigua and Jose Francisco Campos. And also to pray for the sick, we pray especially for John Paul Calvo and for all those whose names we desire to offer in this Eucharist. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Samuel. When King David was settled in his palace and the Lord had given him rest from his enemies on every side, he said to Nathan the prophet, here I am living in a house of cedar while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan answered the king, go, do whatever you have in mind for the Lord is with you. But that night the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go, tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, should you build me a house to dwell in? It was I who took you from the pasture and from the care of the flock to be commander of my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you went, and I have destroyed all your enemies before you, and I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth. I will fix a place for my people Israel. I will plant them so that they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old, since the time I first appointed judges over my people Israel. I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you. And when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, to him who can strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret for long ages, but now manifested through the prophetic writings and according to the command of the eternal God, made known to all nations to bring about the obedience of faith To the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, 
and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with the man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. The scripture that we have been hearing all comes together now. Everything that we've been hearing culminates, and everything that was hidden is now revealed. And today, this is fulfilled in what we've just heard proclaimed in the gospel. Today's scriptural readings is like a tapestry woven by God revealing his plan spoken by the prophets throughout time. It is being fulfilled as the angel Gabriel reveals God's plan to Mary. It is an announcement made to Mary spoken by the prophets, and it is being fulfilled. It is, as we just heard in today's second reading, a mystery that has been kept secret since before the foundation of the world. Mary is the virgin prophesied to bear a son as as recorded in scripture. Mary is to bear the son of God, which is all being revealed to Mary and to all of us this morning. Luke's gospel portrays Mary as the model disciple. She is full of grace, which prepares her for her role as a disciple through her fiat, her yes to God. In today's gospel, listen to the angel Gabriel's words to Mary. He said, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. And in announcing that she will bear the Son of God in her womb, Mary's reply was, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? She questions the angel Gabriel, How can this be? Do you recall someone else questioning the angel Gabriel? Today's gospel answers that question for us. If you recall, the angel Gabriel tells Mary, Behold, Elizabeth, your relative has also conceived in her old age, and this is the sixth month for her who was called barren, for nothing is impossible with God. We just heard this from Luke's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 26. And just yesterday, 
we heard also from Luke's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 5. We hear Zechariah, Elizabeth's husband. We hear of the angel Gabriel appearing to Zechariah to tell him a similar message. He says to Zechariah, do not be afraid. Similar words to Mary, very similar words from the same angel Gabriel. Gabriel says, do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall name him John, referring, of course, to John the Baptist. Do you notice the parallel here in the gospel? Zechariah says, How shall this be? For I am an old man, and my wife is advanced in age. Gabriel expresses disappointment in Zechariah and says, I am Gabriel, who stand before God. I was sent to speak to you and to announce to you the good news. But now you will be speechless because you did not believe my words. Similar words that we just heard in today's gospel from yesterday's gospel, also from Luke. But how the angel Gabriel treats Zechariah and how he treats and responds to Mary are two different responses. So we are told by the angel Gabriel that Zechariah will lose his voice because he failed to believe in the message. And he says, you will lose your voice until the appointed time. When is the appointed time? The appointed time is after Elizabeth gives birth to their son, John the Baptist. And so what happens is that they bring their son over to the temple. And the people have asked Elizabeth, what is his name? Thinking that they will name their child Zechariah. But the mother says, his name will be John. So the people were surprised. Where did John come from? So the people turned to Zechariah. They turned to Zechariah and they asked him, what is his name? Still unable to speak, Zechariah takes a tablet and writes on the tablet and says, his name is John. At that very moment, Zechariah's voice is restored. We can see that the angel Gabriel treats Mary differently. And why? Because God had prepared Mary for this very role. The angel Gabriel tells Mary, you have found favor with God. Indeed, Mary has found favor with God. God sent the angel Gabriel to address Mary by saying, hell, full of grace, the Lord is with you. And that is why the angel Gabriel treated Mary differently from Zechariah. Today's gospel sets the stage for what we will be celebrating tomorrow, the birth of our Savior. That's what this entire Advent season is about. It is for us to prepare ourselves to receive into our hearts the true meaning of what this season is all about. It's about the greatest gift given to us by God, and that is His Son, our Savior. 
we must now echo that yes to God in our own lives. We are all asked by God to allow Christ to be born again and again in our compassion, our generosity, our selflessness, and to build lives centered on God's justice and forgiveness. Let us not be afraid to say yes to God's call to bring Christ, to bring Christ's birth in our work, in our homes, but most especially in our hearts. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and made consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world. As we approach the celebration of the birth of our Savior, let us turn, to, turn our hearts and minds to the Father with confidence in His generous love and mercy. We pray for our archdiocese that we be granted a shepherd who will lead us in being Christ's heart of mercy, voice of hope, and hands of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the church, May she respond to the presence of Jesus in the Holy Eucharist with greater love and devotion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our families, may we delight in our gatherings this Christmas. May the spirit of love, gratitude, and joy reign in our relationships with one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing for John Paul Calvo and for all who are sick or suffering, lonely or housebound, that they will find comfort and companionship in this time of grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who have died, and for Father Ken Yu, Francis Kitigua, Jose Francisco Campos, that as they share our Christmas joy on earth, they may come to enjoy eternal glory in God's kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer for all the prayers we now offer in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear. Heavenly Father, prepare our hearts with your grace that like Mary, we may be a worthy dwelling place for your Son. 
We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our song for the presentation and preparation of gifts, number 6-1, Maranatha, number 6-1. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, our mighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. Praise the Lord in his name, for our good and the good of all his holy truth. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mary's mother, the Virgin the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the, the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, Father Ken, Francis, and Jose, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. 
Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you as if you were already there. Keep me close to you each day. Amen. Our communion song, number 73, Bread of Life, verses 1 and 2. Number 73, Bread of Life.
Number 49, Patience People. Number 49. Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. 2024 annual mass envelopes are available for pickup at the Pastoral Center. Our Christmas schedule is as follows. Sunday, de December 24th, Vigil Masses, 6 p.m. and 9 p.m. Monday, December 25th, Christmas <coughs> Day, Masses, 6 a.m., 7.30 a.m., 9.30 a.m., and 11.30 a.m. There will be no 6 p.m. Mass. All our Masses will be in the main church, Sidus Masi. Bow down for the blessing. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith joyful in hope and active in charity. Amen. Amen. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with a rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. Amen. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying God through your lives. Thanks be to God. Number 580, soon and very soon. Number 580.
Ave Maria Purissima. Ave Maria Pula Gracia.